And we're back after that Da Vinci's Fancy Yellow Mustard preview break. Look at this! We got, we've upgraded, we've completely upgraded our technology, and now I can stop affecting that silly 1930s radio broadcaster voice. Hello and welcome to Rom Hack Races, now officially with video. And that's how you know it's a video game. Before we were just playing regular games, no, 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 my friends, we're playing video games now. First things first. Direct your attention to the lower right-hand corner of your screen, Revelug down here in the lower right-hand corner. They are in the lead. Second section for them right now. There are two sections in this level tonight, and Revelug is playing section two out of two. Jank Pickle, B2, DE, and Germ Dove, plus the rest of our friends. Here's Halcyon, also on the second section. All right. So now Halcyon, Revelug, second section, Jank Pickle, B2, first section. What do you got here? You got a lot of Yoshis, you got a lot of bouncing. Uh, checkered blocks disappear, death blocks will kill Yoshi, and we're using the uh, note blocks which bounce, and the conveyor belts to keep Yoshi moving along here because we want to keep Yoshi. We were instructed to do that by the level, and uh, you need to, uh, need to hang on to your buddy Yoshi. Personally, I love to see it because uh, I think there's far too many levels that uh, just kill Yoshi, so it's fun to see you kind of keeping, keeping him for a change. Jank Pickle here moving through this uh, the yellow shell obstacle that we were talking about before. Mallow the cat getting ready to jump up on my lap because he is mad about how much I am talking. But uh, yo, Halcyon and Revelog here working hard, second section. Mallow the cat, what are you doing? Are you gonna jump on my lap, Mallow the cat? Ah. Okay, I got a cat now. Now I also, all right, now I also have a cat, so we're really ready to go. Nathan MG, upper right hand corner, second section, Halcyon and Revelug. So let's go here for this second section. What are we trying to do here? We got Yoshi, we got bounces, and right now Revelug in the lead right now in the lower right for sure. Uh, they have seen the most of this section and uh, they have made the most progress. We do not have a win yet. We are looking for a first place here, so you haven't really, really missed much of anything. So, uh, yo, you know, for what, for what it's worth, yo, if you have any questions, we kind of got started in a hurry tonight. If you have any questions or anything, or you'd like to learn a little bit more about this, please feel free to ask. Uh, normally, I do a little, uh, hey, how you doing? This is what what's up, ROM hack races thing at the start. But I'm willing to bet that most people will kind of, you already get what's going on here. So tonight's a for the fans kind of night, for the real OGs. So let's check it out here. Let's play some hardcore sight reading Kaizo. Uh, this is a really good level, actually. I had the pleasure of testing this myself earlier tonight from uh, Kerr and Prestonator, a collab level tonight. Really fun stuff with Yoshi and a lot of really brainy stuff. All the metrics for this level are six tonight. Complexity, execution, uh, longest section, everybody rated it six out of ten. So yeah, straight sticks is across the board. We salute you, our half-inflated Dark Lord. And uh, we're looking for, yeah, Halcyon, Revelug, Jank Pickle, though. Wow, you know what? Halcyon is really kind of making some moves here. Halcyon is definitely figuring out how to move and articulate themselves, their kind of jumps and falls in this section to be able to make a little bit of progress. It's interesting here because, like, you see Halcyon trying for that spring. There's a bunch of ways that you could go about that. You don't necessarily have to one-cycle it. And I think some of the the adaptability of these obstacles makes for an interesting race because it allows players to use techniques that more fit their style. Hold up, yo, oh, B2. Coming in here in the upper right, upper left, excuse me. Someday I'll know my left from right. Someday. Ooh, Revelug. They definitely see what they want to do there. Revelug has, I think, been the farthest, but Halcyon's really close on their heels here. They see that they want to grab that green shell and then use it to break that yellow block. That's a custom tile uh, with the yellow kind of zigzag line down the middle. Um, it can be smashed with like a Yoshi yellow shell smash when Yoshi's holding the shell in his mouth. You can spin jump through them and you can uh, spit out shells to destroy them. Otherwise, there's no way to pass through that little tunnel there. 
get through those bats, um, but by grabbing the green shell and spitting it out there. So Revelog definitely knows what they want in that moment. They are just trying to find the right, I guess you could call it, I, I would say articulation, but that might be a silly way to describe it. They want to figure out how to, just the right time to jump and throw so that they uh, yet can keep Yoshi. And now Halcyon working on that same thing. When they spit the shell out, it collides and they lose Yoshi. They don't want that. Or, well, technically they wouldn't really know that. But I think these racers are very smart and they're assuming that they ought to, which is very smart. Revelug, now getting past it. There's one obstacle forward. Nathan, MG, and Halcyon pretty close behind, but Revelug keeping the lead here. I think this kind of clear is just about what you'd expect for a level with this difficulty. We got about 20 minutes in, and uh, we're seeing some some slow but steady progress, and that steadiness I think makes it uh, makes it a really dynamic kind of race. No lead is safe, and uh, it could be that someone even in the back right now could make some big moves. Ooh, B2. I was watching B2 almost getting out of that first checkpoint section. One thing with these races, you know, point this out at the beginning. This is a really good example, uh, this level in particular, I think. Consistency is really helping Revelug right now. The Revelug needs a couple of tries at the part that they're learning with that red shell, right? They need to do that a few times to understand what it is. In order to get tries, they have to beat all the obstacles they already learn. And sometimes it's not as easy, right? Sometimes you might learn something and then you die on it later and that's just sucking up time. Right now you're wasting more time to get another try. So that's the value of consistency. Consistency lets you get more attempts per time than your competition. And that's especially helpful in a race uh, when you, you know, trying to, trying to get to the end. Although we do, you know, say Romhack races, but really it's a celebration of our whole community. And first or, you know, first or 10th place, whatever, whatever your rank, beating this level and being able to try something like this is really hard to begin with. I think everybody deserves props that comes out. Ooh, yo, oh, Revelug maybe thinking about some cheese, maybe. Or maybe they just were trying to recover from a weird bounce. If you're just joining us, yo, we got uh, Halcyon, Revelug, and Nathan in the upper right, all of them on the second section, and uh, Jank Pickle. I'm sorry, Nathan on the first section with Jank Pickle. Bottom, bottom half of the screen versus the right half at the moment. Aha, yo, they're Halcyon too, looking for a little bit of cheese. It's not really a bad idea, because keep in mind, you know, the racers don't know what's coming up next. At whatever obstacle they died on, they're making assumptions about what's coming up next. And one assumption you're seeing is that they know they need, well, they were told they need Yoshi, but they're also just playing in such a way that they definitely need Yoshi. But let's say they fail, and uh, they don't have Yoshi. One thing you could do is try to move ahead a little bit. See what's coming up next. You know you're gonna die anyway, but if you can make a couple of jumps forward, you're going to learn something. Visual knowledge is very helpful in a situation like this. So right now I think it is absolutely a contest. Yeah, whoa, there goes Halcyon. Now we are dead even. So Halcyon and Revelog have now been to exactly the same point in the level. Neither of them has passed that obstacle. Who is going to be more consistent? What is this going to come down to? Can Revelug, with more experience and more tries, manage to get past this obstacle sooner? Or is Halcyon going to be able to get it with a one shot? You know, a little bit less experience, but they really have the sight read in that moment when it counts. And that dynamic between sight reads and consistency is something that you should always watch for with a race especially like this because it's what will determine the dynamics of the whole thing. Jeez, Revelo getting smooth. Wow! Getting smooth with those Yoshi moves. I love this trick. I'm not going to say it out loud quite yet. Here's a challenge, chat, for you. What is the red shell trick? What are they doing there? What would you do there? What are you thinking? You know, what, what would you do, do some armchair coaching here.
Uh, Revelog definitely looking to see that setup again, too. These are good thoughts. I like this. These are good. These are good thoughts. We shall see. We're looking for Revelog to get back. Maybe Halcyon. But to say this is also giving Nathan or Jank Pickle a chance. And for what it's worth, so you know, I want to shout everybody out here. There are, wow, 11 racers who signed up tonight. So you're not just seeing these four. You're, uh, you're, everybody is racing and the scouts are rotating folks in as they make progress. We've got all together Halcyon, Revelug, Nathan, Jank Pickle, B2, CJ, Ender of Games, Endless Ascent, Germ Dove Muzzle, and Proto Pizza. So it could be somebody else even. I've been, I've been misinforming you. Excuse me. Have I been? Did, when did Nathan, MG, and Jank Pickle right now? Both of these friends, these gamers, working on the second section. Did I say first? Did I? Did they both get checkpoints when I wasn't looking? Because I've been looking at the screen the entire time. Ask Mallow. He'll tell you. He, he's a little miffed because I'm not looking at him. I've been watching. So we got. Yeah, they both. Oh, they both got checkpoints after. Right on. Right on. Right on. That's all, that's all good. We're getting to see the, uh, the front runners right here, right now on the stream. Jank Pickle, Nathan, Halcyon, Revelug, everybody has a chance for it right now. And this is where things really actually get very interesting because what's it going to be? You could say Revelug, Halcyon are tied for the lead right now, but Jank Pickle and Nathan, are they going to one-shot it? Are they going to just learn these obstacles and get consistent faster? That's it, it. It's anybody's game. Anybody at any point could sight read these obstacles and just finish the level right here and now. You don't need the experience, ah, but do you? We're looking for B2DE also on the checkpoint right now. Big shout outs, of course, to the scouts tonight. Uh, Fen and Kelgan, thank you both so much for helping us out. They watch the rest of the streams and uh, let us know who to put on the restream so you all don't get to miss anything. And also, of course, I mean, I, you know, um, didn't get to give the proper shoutouts right at the start, but uh, big, big thank you, Mythrillionaire, for doing the restream tonight. Can we please get some Mythrillionaire base type in chat? Maybe maybe tap a couple of extra lands. Here goes Revelug, though. Hold your hype. Holy moly, Revelug, look at that. Uh, yeah, tap tap a couple of extra lands and send some mana Mythrillionaire's way. Uh, with mana burn is a thing of the past. Don't worry, it won't drain their life total. And uh, Mithrillioner has been really helping us out with the restream tonight. Really appreciate that. The uh, being willing to learn a, a new skill and a uh, new little job around ROM hack races. So thank you so much for that. And yes, uh, I love that move with the red shell. Revelug has figured it out. That is what you do. That's a classy little move. And uh, back, back in Mario Maker 1, there used to be this old little trick, the spin drop, where you'd be spinning and you'd like drop an item below your feet and that would let you get like a midair. It's like, it sounds like a weird midair. It's like a dropping midair. And it's you can't really do that in SMW because you don't really get a bounce, a vertical bounce off a spin boost like that. I guess in theory you could drop midair while you're spinning with a grab block or maybe quantum or something. But um, in this case you're dropping, you're spinning and because momentum in SMW imparts toward objects, you're imparting some momentum onto that red shell when you drop it and you're dropping it in front of you but you land on it and when you spin on an object your downward momentum is stopped for just a little bit for the duration of time you are contacting the object and poofing it making that little cloud come up i call that a poof i don't know i always have like ever since i was a kid i think even like the sound it sounds like it's going poof poof um but when you poof an object spinning you're not falling for that brief amount of time, you're just vertical, and so you can move horizontally in that moment without actually losing any vertical distance. And that's how they're using 
the spin jump property there to slide through a gap they wouldn't otherwise be able to jump through. Um, excuse me for one second. I'm going to have to feed a really hungry cat. I'll be right back. Hey, hungry cat. Come on, buddy. Let's go get some food. Let's go, man. You know me. All right, got some food. Mallow got a snack. Don't worry, don't worry everybody. He's fine, he's fine. He was a little worried that there was no more food in the whole wide world, but I showed him that he was mistaken and there was food and he was very pleased. Now speaking of, yeah, speaking of some food, looking at Nathan with that really neat little cheese for that Yoshi part. And uh, Revelug with a little bit of progress, maintaining the lead over Halcyon. So Revelug knows, yeah, they're dropping that shell, and they're spinning off Yoshi. And then they want to get that P-Switch. And uh, eh, I like the tricks in this level. They're very... They're just chill. I don't know. This is like a... This is a kind of a nice six. Some levels get to a six difficulty by being very brutal. And this one achieves it by being just kind of like classy. It's these kind of nice classy movements. I like Yoshi preservation as a theme. Uh, I've made like Double Dragon and some levels with that where you just like keep Yoshi. Because I think that really there's a lot more potential for Yoshi when you're trying to keep him. You know, bailing off Yoshi as an instant double jump is just, that's just the same thing, you know? Well, Yoshi is just instant double jump machine. And there is Nathan. Getting through that section with the cheese. I don't know, maybe they think that's what you have to do? I'm not even sure if Nathan knows they're cheesing or not. Because that strat works. Instead of using the green Koopa to break the yellow block and open it. Uh, they Okay, so Nathan does know about the strat, but it's a neat little backup. If they fail to grab the Koopa before it flies away, they can always try that sneaky little backup strat. Very cool. Sometimes having something like that in a race level is actually a really good thing. Yeah, because that's a good way to put it, because awareness wins the race. And it's helping Nathan get a little bit of an edge here. Even though they don't have as much experience, look that they're getting very far runs, and they could be a contender for first place right now. Or is it going to be Revelug? Here we go, Revelug in the lower right. Oof. Brown platform, though. That's the second time they've been there. Now that platform is moving pretty fast. Wow, this really could. You know, this this is kind of interesting because it has been Revelug the whole way tonight. Revelug has just been like maintaining that lead. Halcyon, I would say, in second right now. And I'm curious to see if that's gonna last. Oh man, Halcyon. Ooh, clever! Ooh, that's actually really clever. Hmm. But is that going to help? The thing is that you kind of need to be spinning there. And it might not work to get past the line of flying green Koopas unless you're spinning. Oh, geez, Revelug, though. They clearly know. They've got the strats and they've got the knowledge. Revelug, here we go. Upper right hand corner. Sorry, lower right. Revelug in the lower right. Let's go! 
really gotta be schmoovin' to get past that brown platform. But you gotta, you gotta think, I mean, they know how many sections there are. So, uh, Revelug knows that this is section two out of two here. Nice drop, Revelug really cleanly. I, uh, man, I don't know, Revelug looking sharp right now. Revelug's got the consistency about one obstacle past where most everyone else is. And it's gonna take a big sight read for someone to overcome that. Could happen, could happen, but uh, the amount of clutch someone needs to take this lead from Revelug is increasing by the minute. Yep, because they just keep getting back there. So Revelog just getting super dangerous right now as a contender here. They keep getting back to that new part. And somebody somebody else needs to be able to match that like right now. Now granted, uh, for those that don't know, the racers don't actually see where everybody else is. I mean, I suppose they could. You could watch the stream or whatever. But I think most people are just kind of playing. Um, so you don't, you're not necessarily making moves based on what you think everyone else is doing but we can see this from our perspective and watch the narrative unfold Revelug really has a great command of the Yoshi shell jump. And that's something we're hopefully about to see again here. Keep your eyes on the lower right. Ah, good try. Yeah, they know they want that. The Yoshi shell jump is a... I like it. I really... It's a, a trick I'm very fond of. It's just your standard off-the-wall, you know, garden variety shell jump. Except you're doing it by spitting the shell with Yoshi instead of... Uh, throwing it out of Mario's hands and that actually creates a different kind of timing because small Mario throws the shell at a particular angle to himself big Mario carries the shell in the lower of the two squares that make up big Mario's hitbox right so the point of origin of the shell when you're when you're aiming and you're up against you're up at the wall and you're aiming to throw the shell you're judging based on a known point of origin for the shell you know where the first point in the angle is going to be right and so you can kind of judge where to place your shot in that way the reason Yoshi shell jumps are trickier is because Yoshi carries the shell in the upper hitbox instead of the lower one and so the angle has to change you can't use the same angle for a Mario holding the shell shell jump as you can for a Yoshi shell jump. And so you're sort of just learning two different things. It's a it, it's a guitar and banjo, you know what I mean? You're, you're wearing like one kind of shoes, you're wearing boots, you know what I mean? They're just, it's the same thing, but they're just fundamentally different. And personally, I think the Yoshi shell jump timing is really fun. And I think people struggle with it because they've learned the regular Mario shell jumps and it's rough to kind of unlearn and relearn a new timing. Add to that the fact that Yoshi turns left and right. It takes Yoshi longer to turn from left to right as it than it does Mario because of Yoshi's kind of big head and it makes it look like pseudo 3D as Yoshi turns to face the camera. Watch, watch, you'll see it on the left rights. When you're riding Yoshi, you just kind of like sway left and right. And being able to compensate for that, because it, really good shell jump players rely a lot on very subtle left rights in order to get their position perfect, um, which is a lot harder to do when you're on Yoshi and that left right takes a longer amount of time. But I love, the, I love the case that this level is making for Yoshi preservation obstacles. There's so much to be gained. I, I know the, the silly meme 
everybody throws Yoshi in the pit. But there is a, just a ton to be gained by letting Mario keep Yoshi. Having the player maintain Yoshi. You have all these interesting Yoshi tricks. You have your Yoshi shell jumps. I mean, you can do weird Yoshi midairs. Do you know a trick that's RTA viable? I want to see more Yoshi, keep the Yoshi levels. So I'm throwing some stuff out there. Do you know an item abuse trick that is 100% RTA viable, which is gonna go in like a level I make at some point? Do you know the spring teleport? If, if, you, if you touch a spring, like bouncing on it, at the same moment that Yoshi eats it, you'll vertically teleport yourself in the air? Okay, guess what you can do? You can do that in midair with Yoshi. You can like be on Yoshi, toss up a spring, jump on Yoshi, and then midair spring teleport. You know what else you can do? Double carry an object, like you're double carrying with Mario and you're carrying a spring, and then you can throw the spring or drop it and like set up a midair teleport anywhere you want. That's a thing that just exists. That's just one of the many amazing things that Yoshi can do. There's so much, there really is just so much when you keep Yoshi. And I, I've, always, I've always felt Yoshi was a little bit shortchanged by simply being a double jump machine. You know, what, what's Yoshi's purpose? Ah, you double jump with him. You get two jumps because you bail out, you know? Get, jump off the pit, go under something and then bail off Yoshi and then Mario goes up and, and Yoshi dies. You know, that that's, I don't know. That's okay, it's fine, but what else you got, you know? There's so much Yoshi can do. I encourage you all, at whatever level of skill or, or level design you're at, if you're making Kaizo or Standard, I encourage you to find creative ways to have the player keep Yoshi. And you know what else? There's many types of gate. It's very easy to make a situation where you, the player needs to have Yoshi in order to get through. Make him walk over some munchers or a, a door that's off the ground. It's, it's simple to do. It's fun. I want to see more Yoshi levels. I'm, 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 I'm advocating hard for this. We, I really, I really like Yoshi levels. That is, that's another good point, absolutely. You interact differently with sprites when on Yoshi, that's true. Yep, you bounce off stationary shells, which gives you a lot of options for level design uh, that you normally wouldn't have. Um, yeah, absolutely. And you know, I, I happen to love a trick uh, since we're talking Yoshi tech, Revelug though, watch out. Lower right. Oh. Mmm, a delicious, refreshing 7 up. They still won't give me my very cool prize, but. But I. Uh... Oh, yo! Wow, all right. Halcyon managed to get through that red shell obstacle without spinning. They just did it with a regular jump, and it still worked out just fine. That's interesting. Uh, it's neat that that can happen. Yeah, doing it maybe a slightly harder way, um, and a more dangerous way if one of the bounces throws you up into the ceiling. But it's working. Excuse me, getting over a little bit of a head cold, I am fine. <coughs> Here goes Revelug. Got that shell jump, and Revelug in the lower right. They are in the pipe. Aw, uh, Mario, with great teamwork, we both got through together. Let's stick together from now on. And Revelug, they are in a new room, but what's that over there? What's that over there? An orb? Well, gee, guess we've got to figure something out here. What's going on? Revelug, making moves. Oh. Oh, see, this is kind of funny. It's not over till it's over. I'm sure Revelug sees what to do here, but, uh... Oh, come on. There you go. All right. And that's a win, a very strong win from Revelug tonight. They had the lead for pretty much the entire time. 
They got the first checkpoint, they got the second checkpoint, and they just kept pounding away at this level. They really, that was a really consistent effort. Nicely done. Good win, Revelog. Well, you know, fun funnily enough, uh, there's actually no way, there's no way to die in that room. Um, there's nothing to kill you and you couldn't mess it up. So it was really just kind of a time, time spend. Good job, Revelug. Thank you for the raid. That's a win tonight. That is a, that is a freaking gold star win. You get one, one bucket star, one personal pan pizza. This is a tough one tonight. If you're just joining us, we got uh, six out of tens all across the board. And I've I've said before that you know a four out of ten isn't really what it used to be. Players have gotten better. This is a this is a good level because I think it this is a six, right? I think sometimes even like levels that are like five, maybe maybe it's not really a five. You know, maybe it's more of a four and a half, maybe a four. You know. I think players have gotten better, and, and as such, the ratings have kind of slipped backwards a little bit. This is a 6 out of 10, you know? I mean, it, like, so we, have, we have some easy levels, we got some harder levels from time to time, and this one, I think, is decidedly, like, a very good example of something that's just harder. It's tougher. Oh, Halcyon, though. Check out the lower left here. Halcyon, having a little dance party. Having a dance party, yo. Oh man, get to get your favorite dance emotes in chat. Oh, that was a great party though. There is a whole crew of testers that uh, helps out every week, um, whose names I would like to shout out at this time. This week, the level was tested by Fen Doc, RB Pimlico, Mithrillionaire, Ampersam, Sequel Infection, and me, Glitch Cat. Sometimes I do um, jump in on testing when I can. And other times, I leave it to the knowledgeable and experienced crew. Um, I would like to jump in on testing more. I've had a week. Haven't we all had a week? And you know, even though we've all had a week, the testers still found time to help out this week. So, uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes yeah, sometimes nah. But there are always people who are, are able to do that, and we are really grateful because without them, this would not be able to go. Not to say the levels are bad, just that... A lot of experience in the field of setting up, you know, sight read Kaizo races. You always need to double check the level. Always. Like, even, like I'll say this, even if it were me, right? If I were making the level, or I'm not saying I'm so great or whatever. If it were me or, I don't know, this like a very great maker, Morsel, or someone, you know, that we absolutely know is not going to create garbage. Um, that really knows what they're doing. Even, even the best of the best still get your level checked out tested ahead of time because there's always going to be something this something's a little too tight something's a little confusing uh you know the idea really is you're making levels for hacks sure and that's your hack and you can do whatever you want you know that's your space when you're making a level for a race specifically there sometimes are extra considerations and it's not a rule, man. You know, oh, I shouldn't make my level this way. I don't follow the rules. That's cool. It's not really a rule for how levels should be made. But there's just certain things that players in a race are really going to want that you might not always want to put in a level if it was just your own hack or whatever. Certain things like a little bit of indication, certain jumps not being as tight as they are, a message box that just explains what you have to do instead of makes you figure it out, checkpoints, extra checkpoints maybe, you know, things like that. Because you've got to figure, you're making a level, yes, but you're making it for a race. And if you really think about that, if you stretch your creative mind a little bit, you'll realize that that affords you certain opportunities as a maker that you otherwise wouldn't get to have or play with. Like, you could make, like, this level does a good job of playing with that. Kerr and uh, Prestonator did good with that. At the end, there's a little mechanical fun room. And you might not die, I mean, you're not going to die, but you might not get it correct, you might not figure it out right away, and it didn't happen here, but let's say there's multiple people and they're very close. Maybe that silly fun room would make the difference 
between, you know, who got first and who got second or whatever. Are there certain things that you can just kind of play on their assumptions, right, as a race? And so, I don't know, I, I would encourage makers to think about, like, actually making levels for a race. You can tailor it in that way. Well, that is, I mean, you know, in, in, invisible blocks are a tale as old as time, and, well, no, not really as old as time. They go back to 1987, when the first invisible block was used in level 1-2 of Tonkachi Mario by an unknown author. That's right, Lost Levels did not invent Kaizo Blocks, that was in fact invented by hackers. For a long time I thought it was Lost Levels too. it wasn't. It was Tonkachi. But that's another story. It, you know, it, the, the conversation about invisible Kaizo Blocks has evolved a lot over time. Uh, back in the day, call it 2015, 2016, 2017, and earlier, they were more often than not used in, a, in what we would call a mean way, a trolly way, just to to either surprise you and kill you or make a normal jump really tough. And something I used to say was that Kaizo blocks define the shape of the space that you're in. You know, they, they, they serve to add a stipulation onto a jump that wouldn't have to be there, but it is. And so you're using more skill when you play to avoid them. And it used to be much more of a thing back in the day to... Uh-oh, Nathan. Oh, Nathan. Nice try, though, but they need Yoshi. It used to be more of a thing back in the day to... How do I, how do I put this? Back in the day, it was more of a thing to have to memorize the position of the Kaizo blocks and then remember where they all were and then jump in order to avoid them because they weren't marked. Marking Kaizo blocks is pretty common now, but that was like, what do you mean mark a Kaizo block? What, why would we ever do that? That's the whole point, not to mark them. There was like a whole discussion of that, you know, back in back when. And unmarked is still cool, you know, it can still be funny. I think, this is just a hunch. It was just a GC7, we're gonna put on my, like, Fry from Futurama, I'm gonna put on my tinfoil conspiracy hat here. But, I've seen Kaizo grow and evolve for just getting close to a decade now. And one thing I think is that Invictus ended Kaizo blocks. Invictus, the hack Invictus by Judge Cook changed Kai the community's view on Kaizo blocks and it's, it made us all kind of tired of it because we're all tired of it. First we're all like, oh lol, lol troll your friends, haha it's funny. And then a lot of us played Kaizo for a long time, and we took our lumps. We took our share of Kaizo blocks, and we all got kind of tired of it, you know what I mean? And we were all just like, you know, wow, we've all hit a few. You know, it's like, it's all funny when it happens to someone else, and when it happens to you, it's, it hurts. Uh, with the comedy is when you fall down in a sewer and die. Tragedy is when I stub my toe. It's exactly like that, but with Kaizo blocks, right? So. We're all feeling that way after hitting so many of them, and we're all feeling a little sour. And then here comes Juz Cook with a brand new hack. Great, amazing work of art we've never seen before. Invictus, an instant classic, a household name in Kaizo. And Juz Cook promises us. He says, No Kaizo blocks, mate. And we all say, Thank you, Juz. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. We were all so relieved. We, we were happy. We were like, yeah, no Kaizo blocks. All right, you know, I don't have to worry about that. And then we all got to the very last level. And we hit that one Kaizo block. Because he said no Kaizo blocks, plural. And there was one. And I think you can feel the collective reverberations of that moment of all of us being so excited to not have to deal with Kaizo blocks and then be rudely reminded of all the pain we've gone through. And I genuinely feel like that trickery changed Kaizo blocks forever. That moment, it was the watershed moment where we all said, you know what? Maybe I've used Kaizo blocks enough. Maybe I'm really not going to put Kaizo blocks in my hack. And from that moment on, we all changed our ways. Juzcook showed us the importance of changing our ways. He showed us why 
we we need to think before we use them. And I really do. I, I think historically speaking, as Kaizo's resident historian, uh, I really do believe that Just Cook's one single Kaizo block in Invictus killed Kaizo blocks as they were used in the old, not forever, not completely, but it, but it killed their usage. It ended Takamoto's arc and it started a, a more modern interpretation of how to use them. <laughs> And that's my story. Thanks for listening. We've definitely got a race going on if you're just joining us here. Jank Pickle, Nathan MG, Halcyon, and Muzzle. Everybody on screen working on the second section. We've also got a Germ Dove off stream also on the checkpoint this is a tough level tonight six out of ten in all categories two sections and we are looking for a second place on the podium right now first place tonight revelode by a big margin but everybody else doing great no shades of course we are here to support everybody so put your favorite streamers emotes in chat to cheer them on grab some rom hack race emotes of your own and uh thanks for being a part of it if you have questions about Kaizo or mechanics you want to learn more, shout it out in chat. You can also visit romhackraces.com to download this patch, try it out for yourself, or jump on the Discord server if you want to uh, hang out with the community, if you uh, maybe need some help on your next Romhack project, need some advice, or just want to connect with other people playing Kaizo. Romhack Races Discord's got you covered. I think you're right, Boozy. I think you're absolutely right. Because creativity kind of happens in waves like that. Sort of regressive waves. Like first, Kaizo blocks were the fresh thing. and We all were trolling each other. And then it changed and we all got sick of it. And we stopped using it. And so that sets the stage for Nathan MG in the upper right to get in the pipe and make it to the final room. We gotta learn about teamwork here. But yeah, eventually there will be a reactionary uh, thing and we'll be like, no, I'm going to use 50 billion Kaizo blocks. Like it's kind of it's kind of got me thinking of a level where the concept of the level is it's a pretty basic like, you know, Takamoto style Kaizo, except for the fact that there's like a bajillion Kaizo blocks everywhere and you have to memorize like all of it. Like that could be interesting, you know, and Nathan, you know, what else is interesting. Nathan MG. Getting out of this level. Oh, almost with the 2-2-2 two, two, two on the timer. But, uh, geez, you know, I, I really... Nathan, I think, uh, I don't know if they have more or less power, but their their capture is just looking so so wonderfully normal. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, that's a bad thing if it looks weird, but, you know, I, I hope you're all right. Like, what happened? Maybe it's like a cartoon and they got bonked on the head, you know, and they, like, turn into a different person. Good job, Nathan, on the second place. A very, very strong contender watch out for nathan i really appreciate their skills they are out here like every week racing really hard and that's really cool oh nathan got the 58 58 nice that's the sub hour Very good. GG. GG, Nathan MG. Drop a follow in chat while we're hanging out, y'all. It's Saturday night, and I bet you're going to be wanting some more Kaizo on your TV after the race is done. So uh, drop a follow for the racers, and uh, go, and, go and say hey to somebody else. Yo, good job, Nathan, man. Well played. I, I gotta say, you know, I, I'm here to support everybody. I want to say, though, in particular... I always see you coming out and trying really hard. I've seen you improve your skills a lot. No, not in like a backhanded compliment way, but I've seen you improve your skills. I see you try really hard. I see you come out and race every week. You've improved your standings. You've won races. Like, thank you. Your, your determination and dedication is an inspiration to us all. I really, really, really hope you can feel that.
Yeah, you know, so so have a cookie. They're pretty good. Jank Pickle also going for that cheese. I saw that doing the uh, doing the Nathan MG sneak through strat. And ooh, yo, maybe Jank Pickle trying for that uh, yellow shell. Well, thanks everybody from the raid. How's it going? We are Rom Hack Races. If you're just joining us, Jank Pickle B2 Halcyon and Muzzle here working on the second section of a two-section level by Prestonator and Kerr. We're juggling some Yoshis, uh, we're kicking some yellow shells, we're spinning, we're jumping, we're throwing that P-switch up into the sky, Jank Pickle, oof. Oh, me? I'm doing fine, thanks for asking. I'm having, I'm having a pretty nice night, if I do say so myself. Saturday nights I tend to, uh, tend to take off. I'm not usually streaming on, uh, on my own channel, but I do the races. I've kind of, I've enjoyed it. You know, it's, 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 it's my day off. So, I'm hanging out. I think Sky and I are going to watch maybe some movies later. She's been wanting to watch, uh, what are we going to watch? Back to the Future. She hasn't seen, she hasn't seen Back to the Future. Or she saw it a long time ago. She doesn't remember. I'm like, what? You never saw Back to the Future? So we're going to watch all three Back to the Futures. I want to see Back to the Future 3. Because that's the one that I haven't seen in the longest. And over the weekend, I last weekend, I was I watched part one and two. Which is what brought up this whole discussion in the first place. And it was silly because we were hanging out. I was working a job. I clean carpets uh, when I'm not streaming. And... Um, we were at a job, we were hanging out at a hotel, and we were watching TV, and they had Back to the Future 2 on, and I was watching it, and I was like, okay, cool, and then it ended, and the, the TV announcer guy was like, up next, Back to the Future, and I was like, okay, cool, it's gonna be Back to the Future 3, obviously, because they just played part 2, and then it was freaking part 1, man, that's just like, what the heck, you know, you can't do that to me, so I, I felt kind of debated, you know, and I wanted to, uh, really wanted to sit down and see part 3, but then Sky never saw 1 or 2, so now we have to start all the way at the beginning again. So now I have to watch Back to the Future 1, which is fine. It's a great movie. I'm not complaining. You know, I'm freaking Doc Brown is like the best. I love Doc Brown. Who doesn't? Um, you know, he's, he's wonderful. So um, that's fine. But, you know, now we got to watch two more Back to the Future just to see part three, you know. So that's how I'm doing. <laughs> that's my day. We went to the car wash today. That was cool. Me and Sky. We went out and got, yo, muzzle, oh, yo, muzzle here in the lower right, hold up, hold up, muzzle, on the big read, ooh, nice try, though. Uh, we went to the, went to the car wash, uh, we got, it was fun, we got Taco Bell, we had to go out and get some food for Mallow at the pet store, and, uh, we had to go pick some stuff up at the store, and... We got Taco Bell, and we wanted to wash the car, so we got Taco Bell, and we sat in the car wash while it was, like, doing the car wash, and we were eating Taco Bell. That was fun. It's the little things, you know? Yo, Muzzle, though, I think, yo, we could have, we could have some moves here. I'll tell you what, Muzzle is looking really strong right now, because Muzzle has figured out a very consistent way to spit out the green shell at this part coming up right here. Watch this. Yeah, they've got it. Wow, that's sharp. Good job, Muzzle. They have figured out a way to consistently spit out that green shell without hurting Yoshi. And that's a that's something that I think a lot of racers, myself included when I tested this, have struggled with a little bit to try to get that to happen so they don't mess that up. But Muzzle, on the other hand, has the play. And I think that's really going to help them get tries at the ending, so... We could be looking for a podium here. I don't, you know, I, I try to be, I gotta, I wanna be, I am impartial as a as a commentator, but uh, I'm not sure if Muzzle has gotten a podium before, and I'm always rooting for people to, you know, get like their first win or first podium or whatever. That's always a big moment. Yeah, so there, we're seeing a little bit of a different strat. You are intended to break the block. However, uh, Nathan and Jank Pickle have figured out that you can, if you're tricky, kind of sneak through there 
Uh, it's a neat little cheese. I think it's kind of cool to have it in. It's like a backup strat. You try for the shell, and then if you don't get it, you could try the other method and see if that works. It's, it's kind of cool, I think. Um, but yeah, that's that's what they're that's what they're going for. Because there's that little one time. Nice, Jank Pickle. That was so clean. That last one they did was so freaking clean. Amazing. Jank Pickle, a player with some freaking skill, man. Oh, dear. I'm not sure if they know. I think they know what to do there. Endless Ascent. Let's go. Get into the checkpoint. Making it uh, one, two, three, four, five, six right now on the checkpoint. Second section. Oh, that was cool, Jank Pickle. They might have been able to yump and save that, actually. Needs to get the Yoshi. Yeah, they need to get the Yoshi across there, but they're making an assumption that they want to bail off of the Yoshi. We'll see how that plays out. Also, like, you know, how, how are you all doing? What's up? How, I hope your weekend is going well. Thanks for spending a little bit of your Saturday here on ROM Hack Races. If you're enjoying yourselves, we have one of these races every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. And they are open to anyone who wants to try to sign up, or they're just uh, here for you to watch and hang out and have a fun time. Yo, B2 getting that nice clean Yoshi shell jump too. They could be getting close to the end. B2 in the upper right. Oh boy, about to make a big move here. B2, they are in position. Ah. The skills though, I think, oh geez, Halcyon with the same thing. So Halcyon gets to learn. So here's the thing that racers are doing. Instead, they have Yoshi with the yellow shell in Yoshi's mouth. Instead of doing a Yoshi shell jump off the wall there, they are instead just bailing off of Yoshi to get over the wall. Perhaps thinking that that's what they need to do in the first place. However, what they actually want is to be standing on Yoshi on that brown platform. So here goes Halcyon with this consistency. And yeah, if they can get back there, I'm pretty sure they now know. Because they saw the pipe and they put that together. Aha, I have to be standing on Yoshi. In order to go into the pipe.
Halcyon, oh yeah. Back again, and that clean shell jump, and they are onto the brown platform. Look at this. Oh no! Oh! Oh no! Oh jeez! They didn't have the distance. They, they jumped a little bit too early, and they didn't have the distance to make the landing. They were going into the pit unless they bailed off Yoshi. Yep. Yep, they might have been able to save that with a... If you bail off Yoshi in the air, you can push Yoshi forward a little bit and, like, get him to land places. There might have been a save for that, but I think that's one of those things, you know, it happens to the best of us. Proto Pizza, though, off stream, getting the H, and here goes Halcyon back again. Can they get it? Yeah, they know what's up. Not to be denied twice. Halcyon, very cleanly. Getting that checkpoint, and uh, getting into the final room here. Flipping some switches, learning about teamwork. You know, it makes the dream work, I've heard. So this room uses a fun little Yoshi clip. Uh, there you go, Halcyon GG. When Yoshi is in uh, solid ground, Yoshi will just upward, move upward and clip until Yoshi is not in solid ground anymore. Nicely done, Germ Dove. Coming in here in the lower left hand corner. Our restreamer doing a great job tonight. Big, big, big shout outs, Mithrillionaire all over. Helping us out with just about everything you could name under the sun. It's Jank Pickle, B2, Germ Dove, Muzzle, me, you, Super Mario, Yoshi, and all of our friends here. That is to say, in your house, in your area, in your neighborhood, on Rom Hack Racing. Oh. Hey, I want to, uh, while, while we're hanging out, you know, I, uh, I want to give a shout out last night because I was not here last week. And, uh, RB Pim Lico and Dr. No filled in on commentary they did a really good job thank you i wanted to say that i didn't get a chance to say that thank you uh i thought they did great rb pimlico a really really sharp commentator play tester and just a great kaizo mind in general so i appreciate that yo halcyon thank you for the raid good plays good plays tonight i think that's a that's the third? That's the podium? Is that our podium? That is. Nicely done. Third place. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Muzzle. And look at this, Jank Pickle. Excuse me, I didn't even see. I was I was watching Muzzle, and then, uh, and then I was distracted. And Jank Pickle. There you go. Nicely done. They're coming in hot now. Jank Pickle with the fourth. Well done, well done. Tough level tonight on 6 out of 10. I really, I think this is... When we say 6 out of 10, we say 7 out of 10... That's what we're talking about. I think this is a great example of that. The difficulty system is doing work tonight. And I think it's for the, it's a good thing. I, I think, I mean, a, a six out of 10 level should take 30-ish minutes for a first clear. I think that's pretty reasonable. 30 to 40, that's what one would expect.
We got Endless Ascent in the upper left, B2, DE8, 1, Germ Dove, and Muzzle. Are y'all doing okay? You need anything? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to the store. You need any, need anything? Any, any tornado rolls? Any of those little, uh, those little packets of crackers? Maybe a, uh, a little bottle of water? Oh, yo, yeah, I'll, I'll grab my Arnold Palmer. I'll get one for me too, actually. Muzzle, aha, you have learned. And now Muzzle need, now Muzzle knows. I don't think they have Cornettos. I think they only have the little tornado wraps with the the egg in them. You know, little egg and sausage little dealios. I think that's all I got last time I was there. Unless you want me to drive to the one on Maple, but that's gonna be like 45 minutes and I don't really feel like going through the business district at like this hour because all those businessmen are gonna be pretty wasted. Ah, yo, how's that come out? Strawberry Jam. We give a shout out for that, man. If you like playing mods, but you don't really like Super Mario World, I mean, I don't know, if you don't like Mario World, I don't know why you're here, but uh, if you prefer Celeste, if you prefer a little bit of Celeste with your with your SMW, nice thought, muzzle. Oh no, maybe they have to do a, do a Yoshi show. Uh, but check out Strawberry Jam. It's a giant new collab that came out. It's a Celeste mod. I guess you could really call it a mod. It's not really a hack since, like, it was made with official tools. And it looks just gorgeous. It's a whole... It's, like, basically a whole new Celeste game. But it's got, like, a billion levels in it and all kinds of beautiful graphics and music and stuff. It is the Celeste hack right now. Big, giant community collab. Tons of people worked on it. And I have heard, man, nothing but good things. I'll tell you what, Jank Pickle, if you want, they're running the deal right now. Um, and I have my coupon, um, cause I get them for free on this website. Um, I could get a, I could get two green apples and one large ghost. And that would be better, right? You just, you'd have more apples and ghosts. Um, if you want, I mean, if not, I'm going to use the coupon and I'll just get you what you want, but you know, I figured extra ghosts. Goats love apples. Or so I'm told. I guess they also like tin cans. That's not really true, is it? That's that's just some junk from cartoons, right? Go goats don't eat like anything, like tin cans and trash and junk. Like that they they, they don't really do that, do they? Like no animal really eats tin cans. Well, I guess like certain What eats tin? Nothing. What animal eats tin? Even like some bacteria or something in the ocean? Do like barnacles like break down tin or something? Goats like to know I'm just about anything. So tin can't? Really? Don't eat tin cans, goats. That's bad for you. That's bad for you. Do that. Stick to foods. Oh, jeez, Muzzle. Wow. You know, man, I I respect this effort so much. I don't know if Muzzle has put together that they need to do a Yoshi shell jump to get over that wall. They have tried so many different things instead of the Yoshi shell jump. And I'm not sure. Maybe they don't, uh, maybe they just don't feel confident with the trick. But I think they get it. Like they know how to. They should know how to do it. They're playing well. I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. But uh, they they got some learning to do. I think even if goats can eat tin cans, they shouldn't. You know, 
If they just shouldn't do that. No one should eat tin cans. Maybe that's why, maybe that's because it was a baby goat. And baby goats don't know the difference between foods and not foods. They're just babies, you know? Yo, what's up, Proto Pizza? In the upper left, it's Proto B2 Germ Dove and Muzzle. Working on the second section. If say if you have questions or anything, I know we're just kind of hanging out and shooting the breeze here. If you have questions, if you want to learn a little bit more about Kaizo or about ROM hack races, please feel free to just shout it out in chat. Just interrupt my dumb stories about eating Taco Bell in a car wash. That was the highlight of my day. Don't grow old, youngsters. Stay youthful forever. Because when you get old... You talk about, boy, I got some Taco Bell and ate it in the car wash as though something exciting happened today. Don't, don't do it. Don't become a square like me. Oh, germ dove. I saw that. I saw that. I just want to point out that I saw that. I freaking saw it. There is the trick that I was mentioning earlier. They did the midair spring teleport. Yo, what happened there, if you go back and look at what how Germdov died like two or three deaths ago, they touched the spring with Yoshi at the same exact moment they ate the spring. And in so doing, they you teleport up like that. And in this case, it teleported them into a wall, but it's like a frame-perfect thing, and it's neat that it happened. Um, do I have the clip of the tech? The Yoshi tech? Yo, Germ Dove just did it again. Just hit the clip button and you'll see it. Just hit the clip button right now. Just right, just hit it. Just hit the clip button and then look at Germ Dove's screen in the clip. And it, it's literally happened again. Um, offhand, I don't have a separate clip. But essentially the idea is just touch the spring with Yoshi's feet at the moment you're eating it. I think it's the same frame, um, and that'll like instantaneously warp you. But the interesting thing is that you can set that up. Um, you can set that up manually, and by manually I mean like you could have the spring on the ground and do it, but you could also just be in the air. You could just throw a spring into a spot in the air and then get the trick to happen in the air. So in theory, you could like toss a spring and then jump underneath something and then do the trick and teleport up through a wall uh, cause you teleport through ceilings when you do that and my, my favorite application which is something that's more than likely going in a level someday is um to be item carrying you can item carry a spring so you're riding Yoshi but you still have the item held and then once you have the item held on Yoshi, you can then throw or drop the spring and set up a midair teleport that way. In addition to using Yoshi's tongue, which is just all kinds of fun. That's a certain unexplored button tech paradigm that I don't think people really know about yet. You accidentally made a setup where Mario is jumping while holding a shell and jumps into a falling shell and the shells collide and it kills Mario. Is that quantum related? Yes, actually. You are, you are, at least as far as I understand it, yes, you are experiencing 
a sort of a quantum death because the shell, one of those two shells is simultaneously living and dead at the same time and be, and that's happening because you're nudging it while it dies and in so doing, you're, you're now touching a living shell for the moment where it is both living and dead. Oops, you're touching a living shell, so you're getting killed by it. The holy, well, I would say the holy grail, but a very big scientific revolution in quantum jump technology could occur if we could figure out how to make the entire situation more favorable to living. Like, nine times out of ten, a quantum setup will just kill you. And you can do these air setups, and you can do these kind of falling setups where you can reliably die. Uh, you can get yourself hit by something and just die. The real big development in tech would be to figure out a setup that favors being alive. If you could swap the ratio, uh, like the amount of, like the living and dying ratio when you do the trick, most of the time you live and sometimes you die, then uh, quantum jumps would probably be like the new like spring midair or something. It's a kind of an advanced trick, but it would be very doable in levels, and you could use it for a lot of things. The re I mean, quantum jumps are cool, but right now they're just... There's just not, like, really good setups. Well, there are, no, that's not even true. There are really good setups. It's just that the trick itself is so friggin' difficult to pull off, because it's both pixel precise and frame precise. If you're, if you're trying to live, in certain cases, others might have more leniency. I haven't done all the math on each of them. Um, but you're doing a pixel precise, it's basically a yump, but it's also pixel precise. A yump, but you have to hit a specific, you have to hit the, at a specific moment, or in a specific way. But I think there's something there. I think eventually we could find a setup that works for quantum jumping. Yeah, there are certain automatic setups that would make it easier. That is one thing with quantums. You could set up some kind of quote-unquote free or easier quantums by having a tightly controlled setup that very accurately controls where and when things are going to spawn. If you have a shell that's stationary, and you have another shell that's falling down right above it, and the falling shell is going to land and destroy the stationary shell, then all you have to do is jump and land on those shells at the right moment. And that makes a quantum jump setup a little more free. Um, the problem is that it becomes so much more difficult if you yourself are holding the shell and dropping it onto the thing that's being killed because now you have to do the drop at the right moment, at the right position, with the right timing, and land in the right way as opposed to the automatic falling setup which takes care of a lot of those variables for you and means the only thing you have to worry about is just being in that spot at this moment which is a lot easier than having to control your movement. Muzzle, muzzle, let's go. Muzzle, 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 muzzle. I saw it all. I was watching it all with my own two eyes as muzzle has entered the final room. That was the most well-fought victory. I'm so impressed. I mean this 100%. I'm going to give, oh my gosh, how many cool points for this? I don't even know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give muzzle a stock certificate for cool points for 5,000 cool points but the thing is it earns interest so you got to put that in the bank and it will continually earn interest forever to celebrate the extreme dedication and perseverance shown here that was excellent muscle tried everything under the sun to, to figure out how to get that trick to work and they persevered and they got it you'd love to see it that is what this is all about man good job that was a really 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 good clear Endless Ascent joins us. Proto Pizza, B2DE, and Germ Dove. Second section's all around. It's about one hour, 30 minutes into the race. Uh, for those that don't know, we spend about two hours. We plan for a two-hour broadcast. So hang out and get comfy. We're hoping for some more clears. And uh, we'll probably be going on a raid once all's said and done.
Germ Dove also has that consistent strat to avoid Yoshi getting hit by that green shell. It's really paying off. One thing that this uh, level brings to mind is some of the differences between people's strats in these obstacles is uh, something that I like to try to rem remind myself as well and it always tends to be pretty good advice for a race. Um, favor the solution with the fewest inputs. For example, the Yoshi yellow, the green shell part that everyone's been getting hit on. Some racers have figured out that you can kind of jump and spit the shell and sneak underneath it. And some racers are spitting the shell and then doing a Yoshi shell jump with it, navigating themselves back into the landing, and then sticking the landing and moving on. One of those solutions, both of them work, but one of them has fewer inputs. It has fewer points of failure. You're not having to do a whole Yoshi shell jump to get through this. And so, when presented with the option, if you can, Try to think of solutions that just have less going on. There's, you're doing less and you're likely to fail less. Every input is a chance for you to mess it up. The less you touch the controller, the more likely you are to win. If you know, pressing one button is way easier than pressing eight. So make it easier on yourself. Or avoid it entirely. That is another completely viable option if you can. Also, yo, Muzzle2, thank you for the raid. Great job on that. I'm impressed with your tenacity, ferocity, dedication tonight. Good job. Good win. You know, I still kind of want to see that. That's a wonderful thing, Fen. I remember that back from kind of Mario Maker 1 days when you'd, you'd be struggling through this level that is like, it's just like, what is this design? It makes no sense. I'm always dying. I can't do anything. Oh, oh, it's an auto level. Oh, I just hold right. Oh, oh, and then you win. I think it'd be really funny for like a, maybe a ROM hack race, maybe a QLDC type of thing to disguise an auto level so thoroughly that the player doesn't realize it's an auto level and has been the whole time until you want them to, right? Until sometime later in the level after they've struggled and, you know, gotten busted up by something or whatever. And then, and then they realize, oh crap, it's always, it literally always been an auto level. I think that would be funny. Oh yeah, Mario Maker's doing twists on that? Like what? That's kinda that's interesting. Mario Maker has a lot of creativity. I'm curious what kinda what kind of twists are they doing? We're hanging out here, we're watching Proto Pizza B2 Germ Dove Endless. It's week 229 on ROM Hack Races. Here it goes again from Prestonator and Kerr. The Mario Maker streams that I watched decreased by exactly one ever since Braden finished Trials of Death. I was just like, like, well, now I watch one less Mario Maker streamer, I guess. Shout out to Trials of Death. It's so funny, you know, I don't know, everyone, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I know it's kind of a tangent, but, uh, you know, I, I remember, I remember, like, I was aware of Brayden's work before they ever even started making Trials of Death. Back when their levels were just little Trials of Death that were still just ridiculous. I remember they dropped a Mario Maker 1 level on me long ago, back when I was streaming Mario Maker 1 viewer levels. Can you believe it? Here goes B2. Oh, B2. Let's go. Let's go. They had it. No! Oh! But, uh, 
yeah, they dropped a level, and it was called something, I don't even remember, it was called, like, Super Sadistic World of Pain or something, and it was like, I'd like to actually go in back and watch that video again, I'm sure they have one, because if you look at it, it was like Proto Trials of Death, it was like the exact same thing, but just not as, not as death, you know, maybe, maybe theoretically, Trials of Morbidly Injured, you know? trials of critical condition or something you know not not quite this death and uh when they started making trials of death you know it was just there was all people saying all these things going around blah 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 you'll never do it you're wasting your time it's stupid you'll never beat this if someone made it harder or whatever it'll never happen it'll never happen and I, I always felt like it always was inevitable that there was never i'd never once in my mind doubted for any second or any period of time that that level would never be uploaded for the exact reason that he just never stopped playing never once wavered in his own belief it doesn't matter what i believe and that's that's the thing with these super hard levels it doesn't matter what you think like in terms of can this player beat it or not it doesn't if you think they can it doesn't matter what they think matters if they say i'm going to beat it i think i can then you always just trust them let this be a lesson Braden said he could do it. I believe him. If Braden said, no, I don't think so. I'm done. I'm going to, you know, maybe stop or it can't be done. Then, you know, then maybe not. But it was, it was, a, it was a foregone conclusion. TBH. Oh, yo, thank you for that link. I'll check that out. I love everybody uh, getting their Yoshi shell jump practice in tonight. This is good. This is good. You'll all learn it one way or another. You'll you, you'll all learn. Ah. But uh, you got got to get that in. Got to get that Yoshi shell jump practice. It's a valuable, valuable thing. I don't know. Don't shy away from it. Yoshi shell jumps are the same as regular shell jumps. They're just a little bit chonkier. It's the best way I can describe it. It's just a chonkier shell jump. It's like the extra thick crayons, you know? The big giant chisel tip markers. It's just a chonker, that's all. Yoshi shell jumps are just a regular shell jump, but a little chonkier. The extra big size. Mmm, chonky shell jump. Oh, you feeling all right there, chat? Feeling good. I hope your Saturday night is treating you well. Feeling comfy, feeling reasonably happy. I hope you're having fun because, uh, you know, we do these every week. 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, that's the start time. Rom Hack Races, that's the Twitch channel. Unknown Levels, Sight Read Races, exciting fun every Saturday. Commentary from usually me. That's, I, I'm also here. Maybe that's a selling point. Thank you. 
Let's go, Germ Dove. Doing that little, doing that little Yoshi dance. All right, yo, Germ Dove. Oh, maybe. Yo, thanks for these videos. They'll check that out. Thanks for hanging out, y'all. It's a comfy Saturday night. I hope you feel that too. Proto B2 Germed of an Endless. Just kicking it here in the clouds. I don't know, you got, you got any, any plans for the weekend? Any hacks you're trying to take on? You know, like, what's what's your what's your project right now? What are you working on? I'm thinking myself, I'm thinking I'm going to start uh, Tired Mario World. You know, that new Wyatt hack. Playing through some Louis Duce World from Gooey. That's pretty fun. Playtesting? Ooh, fun new stuff. What's new? What's new on? What's new to playtest? Or is it a secret? Super hype, yo, that's exciting, fan. All right, well, all right, keep your secrets. But well, I'll be, I'll be excited to see where that's going. I was thinking lately how uh, I really need to get back on uh, Subcon 2. I haven't I haven't been building Subcon 2 at all. All I do all day is draw now, so I practice a lot. Yo, uh, we got C CJ coming in here in the upper right hand corner. Not sure if I've seen CJ's name uh, before. Forgive me if they've already raced, but I'd uh, love to see new faces, new friends coming in and trying. These races are open to anybody. So if that's you, if you're anybody, maybe you're just somebody, man. Definitely not a nobody, though. Uh, sign up over on romhackraces.com. This is a tough one tonight. If you haven't, uh, haven't seen, this is a 6 out of 10 in all categories. So uh, no surprise that we're having some grinds. It's a tough level, and these racers are doing very well with it. We are set. We schedule about two hours for the broadcast, hoping for some clears here. But if you're looking for some more Kaizo in your life, follow the racers. Plenty of people streaming Kaizo tonight on Twitch. Plenty of great, great players and good friends. Follow that. Check out the Mario World category, and uh, just check around. Most people that are streaming World are usually streaming Kaizo. That's and that's you know what's interesting, historically speaking, that's been a thing. The the slow creep of Kaizo into the Mario World Twitch category to the point now where most Mario World channels are playing a hack and not the original game. It did not used to be that way. Although there are great vanilla speedrunners and super players out there, and uh, we would all do better to watch them. You know, vanilla speedrunning is definitely a thing and a very cool thing. 
So, you know, just just because of the popularity of Kaizo, don't uh, don't think that there's nothing the Vanilla Run can't teach you. <coughs> Pardon me. While we're hanging out, you get to hear my silly voice telling you all this stuff, but ROM Hack Races is a community effort and is brought to you by a collaboration, a, cons a consortation of volunteers who give their time up each week. I would really, really like to say thanks for that. On the restream tonight, Myth Brillionaire, thank you for learning, thank you for helping out with this. We appreciate it so much, and with more person power, we will be able to do more cool ROM Hack Race events in the future. So thank you for taking time out of your day to test for us and to learn how to restream and then to do it. It is definitely not easy to do something new right on the spot, and I think you handled it absolutely admirably. Big, big thanks. Chat, if you have some Mithrillionaire hype, please put it up, because without Mithrillionaire, you wouldn't even get to see anything. So, you know, there's that. Also, Fen, for helping us out all the time and forever. You are so absolutely kind and wonderful. You make this go very often, and we really, really appreciate that. Without Fen, we wouldn't really have races running nearly as tightly as they do. Uh, at least not with me being a kind of here and there kind of schmuck, but uh, you know, I, at least I'm wearing pants today. Additionally, Dr. No, unbelievably helpful, super kind, has always been here for us from the very beginning. Dr. No helps us with so much stuff behind the scenes, keeps everybody on point, and is like always able to step in whenever there's a crisis. Really, really thank you for that. Especially, uh, Fen and Doc tested this week. RB Pimlico, Mithrillionaire, in addition to streaming, also freaking tested for us. Ampersam built the base ROM and tested. Sequel Infection, constantly helping us out. And me, I kind of sloughed in at the last minute and went, ah, oh, duh, let's change something. Uh, big, big thanks, RB. RB Pimlico, myself, and Prestonator. We hung out and found some cheese at the end of this and fixed this uh, at the 11th hour. That was great work and uh, really big shout outs to them. Osu, Fen, Kelgan, Doc, Cherry, and Starlord helping us out with scouting and uh, modding the channel as well. We really, really, really appreciate that. Thank you for that. Kelgan also helping us with the bot and uh, helping everything be automated and run smoothly. Team effort this week for sure, so. You know, it's not just me. Uh, I know you, you hear my voice, so maybe it's like, oh, I do everything. Like, no, I, I do more, less than I probably ought to. So also, sorry, <laughs> I am, uh, I was, I was kind of a slouch this week. I'll say that. What a week. It's Wednesday, Captain. Well, we got about 10 minutes. We are hanging out, hoping for some clears here. Proto, Germ Dove, Endless could have it. Uh, if you say, if you have questions or just want to say, hey, please feel free to shout it out. Not required, just an open invite. So you know, you are welcome here with us.
Oh yeah, the little fast Koopa. We've seen a lot of interesting kind of 1F0 ideas. Jank Pickles level last week with the slidey Mario 1F0s and this one this time with the uh, conveyor belt 1F0s because Mario can't actually stand on that conveyor belt. It only works for Yoshi. So it's kind of like a like a 1F0, but it... Well, it works for other sprites. But it's like a 1F0, but it's moving. It's just one little Koopaling out here trying his best. You know, aren't we all, though? It's one little Koopaling, trying our best. I'm proud of you for trying your best. That's right, you. I know. I see with my all-seeing wizard eye. You know, I bought it from the flea market. It's got a few charges left in it, even though it's from the 70s. I see with my all-seeing wizard eye from the 70s that runs on diesel. I see. I see you trying your best out there amid the fumes that my all-seeing wizard eye spews into the room every time I turn it on. I see you. I see you trying your best, and I'm proud of you. As I cough back smoke from filling up my room, and I think to myself, why do I use this diesel-powered 70s-era wizard eye when there's plenty more readily available ones on Amazon? But I like the retro charm, and I like seeing you all try your best, and I'm proud of you for that. That little Yoshi bounce is quite a predicament sometimes. When left standing still, Yoshi bounces up and down just a little tiny bit, and uh, that can cause problems in Yoshi's interaction with the ground. It's a silly thing, but then again, so is Yoshi. He's a silly little dino. I think you're right. I think it was, I think Fen, I think you're right. I think it was Dram 2, but I can't remember what the trick was. But I think you're right. It's a great trick of level design to get the player to have to care about something like that. Something that they never even needed to bother with ever. And now they're like, ah, oh, this is the most important thing in the world all of a sudden. We got T minus five minutes here, everybody. Uh, like I said, we schedule two hours for the broadcast, but racers are welcome to keep going, keep playing if they want. Uh, we will throw it over on a raid, but I just want to remind you all once again that you can check out romhackraces.com for the official info. Download the patch, jump on the Discord server, talk shop with us, all this and more at our website. Thanks again for being a part of it. Excuse me, too. Just <coughs> I'm getting over a little head cold. Excuse me. I am fine. We are being all safe here. COVID negative tests, even. <clears throat> Picked up a little cold while I was working. Oh, Germ Dove, I love the little dance. Hey, they got it. Germ Dove, potentially for the win. Oh!
Hey, thanks for trying Proto Pizza. It's a tough level, and uh, you know we'd like to kind of let makers express their own creativity. So sometimes you never know what you're gonna get. Thank you for trying. Uh, you know, it's it's like the weather. It'll it'll change next week. We'll have a we'll have a brand new level next week. Something else to try. Thank you for doing your best, though. That's that's always appreciated. And you're you, you win in you win in my book. Well, I mean, you don't win the race, but you, you win. You know, you're like a metaphorical winner. Like, let me put it this way. We can still, you, that's right, you, we can still go with the whole team to preposterous Professor Pete's Pizza Planetarium after the game. You're all, y'all did great, champs. You know, you're all winners. We'll get them next year, Tiger. <laughs> I'm just trying to make Nick laugh. Just doing, I'm doing a bit, okay? It's a bit. It's one little bit. That's a treat. Hey, totally understandable. Games are for fun. Just ask Video James. Oh, Germ Dove, that looked good. Well, we got about a minute to go. I am gonna let our illustrious, talented restreamer, Mithrillionaire, gonna let Mithrillionaire pick one of our fine racers to raid here at the end of the night. Uh, they can pick whoever they please. We let them call the shots. Thank you all for hanging out here. I really appreciate it. We all appreciate it. I know I speak for the whole ROM Hack Race staff. Thank you. We really like doing this whole thing. It's fun to put these races on. It's one of my favorite parts of the week. Sitting down and watching great Kaizo skills and watching players grow and overcome challenges and, and week after week improve their skills. Seeing the new creativity from new makers. We will be back next Saturday. But in the meantime, there's plenty more Kaizo to watch on Twitch. And I uh, hope to see you around again. Thank you for the follows tonight. And uh, we will see you all Saturday at 8 p.m. next week for another ROM Hack Race level. I'm back to bring the commentary, so get ready. You haven't heard the last of me. And uh, we hope to see you all again. So thank you all so much for being a part of it. And I uh, hope your Saturday night goes great. All right, yo, we're going to throw it over to Germdove for the evening. Thank you again to Fen and Mithrillionaire and Doc and Kelgan and D4 for helping us out, for all the testers, for all the friends and fans watching. Thank you for making this my favorite night of the week. I hope to see you again for another race on Saturday. You matter. Your thoughts matter. Your heart matters. Your feelings matter. You matter to other people in your lives. You matter to me as human beings. You matter to the Internet's number one, Longboy Furret. And the people that matter to you in your lives would love to hear from you about that. We know black lives matter, LGBTQIA plus lives matter, indigenous lives matter, disabled lives matter. You too. See you around again for another week, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Have fun with Germdove. Thanks for watching. Keep hacking. Peace out.